Good morning and welcome back to another video you guys. I have so much I need to say, so much has changed, so much is going on. Celine is not with me right now, I left her at home. Obviously with Emian, I am so, so, so thankful he works from home. Like, I think that crosses my mind a million times a day how thankful I am that he works from home. And I can, now not all the time, I honestly keep her with me a lot of the day because he's working. But, um, and he's in meetings and stuff, but I'm so thankful that I can leave her at home with him because I just came to the UPS store really quick. I'm shipping a pair of shoes out to my sister-in-law um, for my niece. They're so cute, let me show you guys. It's also 10.30 in the morning right now, so it's pretty early. Celine woke us up at like 8.30, I think. Um, look how precious. So we're shipping these out. And then you know what, the rest of the day, you guys, I don't have a schedule anymore. I literally don't know what I'm gonna be doing. I don't even know when I'm gonna hold up this camera again because wow. Life as a mother, you guys, is crazy. I have a whole new respect for mothers. I'm not even joking. Like, I feel so bad that I did not respect, not not respect, but like that I didn't appreciate all the mothers around me as much as I do now, now that I am one. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like this is a lot. Anyways, I just, if you are a mother, know how much I appreciate you. You are literally superwoman. Like, you guys, wow, wow, wow. I'm like so in shock at how what's the word at how time consuming motherhood is like it's literally never ending you're always busy you're always doing your job and i, I just if you are a mother know you're appreciated anyways i just have so much i want to share i want to tell you guys about my delivery i, I just want to update you guys on so much so let me go ship these out really quick and i'll be right back okay package is shipped out tell me why that was 15 dollars to ship out a pair of shoes oh my goodness anyways you guys like i feel like i'm about to be rambling because i have just so much to say yeah, i don't know how long i have right now i just texted my husband to make sure she's still asleep so he didn't answer me yet. I hope she's still sleeping so I can like sit and chat with you guys. Okay, let's start with my labor and delivery. So I was due July 18th. That was a Thursday. I, you guys saw that was where my last vlog ended was on my due date. Baby Celine did not want to come on my due date. So I got induced Sunday night. I heard mixed stories about inducing. And personally for me, I had a great experience getting induced. The thing with, okay, let me tell you guys, before I went in, I, for so long now, stopped asking people their experience. Oh, my husband texted me back. Let's see if she's still sleeping. Dang it. Oh, no, she's crying because she's hungry. Okay, I need to go home. We're gonna catch up. See you guys, like this is motherhood right here. Chaotic, like never, just having a chance to breathe. Anyways, um, let me go home, feed her, and then we're gonna catch up and I'm gonna give you guys all the tea on my labor story. Before the labor story, what I wanted to say was I stopped asking people their experience. The reason is because I had one person tell me the worst induction story and I had someone else tell me an amazing induction story. You're gonna hear so many different experiences from people around you and I honestly didn't wanna fill my head with negative stories, especially on TikTok. People will be like, like my horrific labor story. I'm not gonna sit and watch that. Like I'm not gonna fill my head with the worst and scare myself, you know? So I honestly didn't, I, I didn't ask anyone their labor story. I didn't wanna know. I didn't, no, just none of that. And I went in and had my own experience and didn't kind of fill my head with fear and it ended up being amazing. So yeah, that's honestly one piece of advice I would give is just don't ask everyone. Now you should go in kind of knowing what's going on, kind of knowing how inducing works, knowing if you wanna get the epidural or not. Like there's certain things you can ask people kind of how it goes, but going around asking everyone kind of their experience to base yours off theirs i i wouldn't do personally let me go take care of my child because i just got home vela's having their restock in three minutes and i'm literally just gonna sit in my car so i can have a moment to buy it before i have to go in there i really want to get the new watercolor it's not watercolor it's like this one well i can't find a picture of it but it's like the, <clears throat> oh my god choking it's like that new this one right there in the corner it's like the new watercolor i'm absolutely buying it so i'm gonna sit in my car for the next uh, two minutes and wait for this restock buy it and then go in listen motherhood i love it i wouldn't trade it for the world but wow it is an adjustment like i feel like everything is just get up and go get up and go you know like i put her down for a nap oh there's laundry to do there's dishes to wash there's like a bathroom to clean i've you know there's always something to do so yeah anyways i'm gonna go get ready for this restock because i'm not gonna miss it
It's funny looking at like my day-to-day -day life now because before I was such a planner, you know, like I'd have such a routine. In the morning, I'd go on my walk. Then I'd come home and make breakfast for me and my husband, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'd have my days planned out on things I needed to do. It's not like that at all anymore. You guys, UPS, I've been trying to go there for two days now. I've been trying to record this vlog for like four days now, just a day in my life, and I haven't just been able to get the chance to do so. It's all just an adjustment. Again, I've only done this less than a month, so I just think once she kind of gets in the rhythm and gets used to being in this world and I kind of get the hang of her, which I'm getting the hang of her, but like in a way that, you know, we have like a set routine going on, which I know won't really happen to like two-ish months, three months. But I think once we kind of get that routine, now things will definitely be easier in the sense of like day-to-day -day life trying to do things get things done go places oh i know you're so sleepy guys her bedtime was like literally two hours ago she's definitely exhausted I cannot take myself seriously sitting like this. It's so funny, like just having a whole baby with me now. So it's been three weeks. Yesterday was the first time I was able to get up before her and have a chance to like do my skincare and actually complete it and not be rushed. Like, <laughs> and I'm not trying to scare anyone from motherhood. It's the most like, it's so beautiful. It's amazing. I'm not complaining about anything at all, but it's just such an adjustment from what I was doing before. Before I do my whole skincare and take my time. I do hair masks, face masks, which I still actually do hair masks and face masks. Um, but again, everything is just a lot more. You got to do things a lot faster knowing you have, you know, a baby that could wake up any second. Unless you time things right and you know how long her nap's going to be. Her naps are still choppy. Like some days they're hours long, other days they're 20 minutes. Like right now when I left the house. So yeah, things have definitely been chaotic. Let me tell you one thing. I am... Oh, okay. Okay. She just wants to sleep in my arms, so you know what? We're gonna do that so I can have a moment to sit and chat with you guys. One thing is that you, it is so important to keep up with your mental health when you have a baby. So for example, I try to go on a walk every single day or like when my husband gets off of work, he'll kind of take a shift and feed her and burp her and kind of just change her diaper, do all that stuff so I can have a chance to like go do my hair mask like I was saying or my face mask. Obviously be like a father and not a babysitter. But you know, he picks up a lot and helps a lot. I depend on my mom so much. She's so helpful, my sister, my family, my friends like everyone has been so helpful especially that first week after giving birth so i've been slowly trying to find ways to kind of have my self-care like going on walks when for example like i'll let her nap on me and just put up youtube and watch some youtube another thing you guys i've said this so many times is i like you know look good feel good and i live by that if i don't look good i really truly don't feel good and, and something i've been doing to make sure i stay feeling good is my jewelry you guys i've said before i think it was like in my other two videos is how i was saying how i will put on some jewelry and i will keep wearing it for like two weeks straight three weeks straight and then change it out every now and then so right now for example i'm wearing these like cute little pearl ears the last week or so i switched to these like little dainty pearl hoops they're so cute i've been in this ring non-stop you guys chunky jewelry is back and i'm here for it i've been seeing like bangles that have been the trend like thick bangles um but i've been loving this ring and then you guys know i always wear these two gold pieces they're gold for i got from my man and i have always just worn them i added this adorable pearl bracelet it's so dainty it also matches the earrings now i'm now wearing gold for my man you guys know i'm wearing my jewelry from anna luisa like i said these are pieces that i never honestly take off the rings i'll take off if i'm like putting lotion on or like changing her diet or something just because I don't want to get them messy like my bracelets earrings oh this necklace you guys I showed you these two last time I've been wearing them for so long now the one that says mama and then a C for Celine obviously I literally do not take these pieces off and I always wear them and they're just something that helps me feel a little more put together on days I don't feel put together having jewelry on makes me feel cute that's why if I'm not wearing gold I love my pieces from Ana Luisa because they are tarnish free I personally love that I'm getting good quality pieces at a great price and you guys like I've worn this mama necklace before I even gave birth so I've been wearing this necklace i think for three months now i wear it in the shower i've worn it swimming in a chlorine pool like i've had zero problems with them so yeah when i put my pieces on i do not take them off and now hyping them up because like gold is expensive not everyone's gonna go out and buy gold so that's why i'm sharing a brand that's actually good and i'm showing you guys pieces that i don't take off and how great quality they are so you should check out anna luisa <laughs> she's laughing <laughs> she agrees with me and so yeah i'm sharing because i have just been so obsessed with this pearl design and the bracelet is just so dainty i'm obsessed with it for whatever reason they don't last you they have a two-year warranty and you can return it shipping is free also if you're in the united states like there's just it's just ugh. 
yes, that's just a little thing that has helped me kind of feel like myself again and feeling put together. So I'm gonna leave the link to shop their pieces in the description box below because you can get up to 30% off. So definitely check it out. Now let's get into the labor and delivery. So I was due Thursday, July 18th. I went in for my induction on Sunday, which was July 21st, I believe. So we went in Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. By the time, you know, paperwork, getting checked into our room and stuff, it was about nine. And then I changed, they put the IV fluid, stuff like that. And then she put a pill to soften my cervix maybe around 10-ish, I would say. At this point, I'm not feeling anything, no contractions, but I went in at one centimeter dilated. So she gave me the pill to soften my cervix. We're just chilling, me and my husband. We're just hanging out. He's watching some movies on his computer. I'm watching stuff on my laptop. I was actually editing a YouTube video. Anyway, so I decide to sleep a little bit. I wake up around 4 a.m. because I feel a huge gush, you guys. And it turns out that my water broke. So it was around 4 a.m. that my water broke. I thought when your water breaks, it's just like a pop of water and that's it, you're done. No, you guys, my water broke and like, it did not stop. Like water just kept coming out, coming out, coming out. I just never knew it was like that because a lot of people, their water breaks after they get the epidural or their water gets broken. Anyways, I could feel it because I didn't have my epidural yet and it was gross. It was just a bunch of like water coming out. Anyway, so my water breaks at four in the morning and then contractions start at 4.30. Let me tell you guys, wow. A lot of people compare contractions to a like a period cramp. Honestly, I've never had super, super painful period cramps. So when I heard that, I was like, this does not feel like that. Like this feels horrible, you guys. I actually felt like my uterus was getting run over. Props to all the people out there that do not get the epidural. I don't know how you do it. Contractions started at 4.30. I got my epidural at 5.30. I could not handle it. You know what? I'm feeling through these contractions and I'm texting my sister. I'm telling my sister how painful they are, you guys. Like, I could not handle it. And I was like, wait a second. Like, I'm literally here to get induced. Why am I even feeling the cramps? I know a lot of people say getting the epidural slows down your labor. Again, it's different for everybody. For me personally, it didn't really slow things down. So I got my epidural an hour later at 5.30. I was one and a half centimeters dilated. So you guys... I dealt with contractions for an hour and I dilated half a centimeter and it like I couldn't handle it anymore because then I clicked I'm like why am I sitting here honestly dealing with the pain like what am I getting out of this so got my epidural at 5 30 the feeling of it was like cringy Ugh, like it makes me quiver thinking about how the epidural felt I don't know no one's ever sat and told me that the epidural kind of hurts it kind of hurts but anyways, got it. I'd say 10 minutes later, I couldn't feel my legs anymore. I was not complaining. I couldn't feel the contractions anymore. Things were great. I honestly went right back to bed and continued sleeping. Maybe till, honestly, it was choppy because the nurses kept coming in and like checking me. Anyways, I think at 11 a.m. I was seven centimeters dilated, she told me. So I was like, okay, this is time to do my makeup. So I get my makeup out. I start doing my makeup. You guys, I literally went in like wearing my jewelry. I wore my mama necklace. I wore my bracelets. I had my I didn't have any rings on actually, my fingers were puffy. And then within an hour, I was 10 centimeters dilated and I was ready to push. So yeah, that was crazy. I did not expect that to happen so fast. So at 12, I started pushing and then at 12.36 is when she came. And then that was literally it. And again, with pushing, I could like feel the pressure so it wasn't that hard. I was kind of nervous beforehand on how I would push having an epidural because obviously, you know, you can't feel your legs. But they, I kind of lowered the epidural just a little bit to where I could feel the pressure of you know, pushing and I'd know when I was pushing. So yeah, and she came and that was all. As of recovery, I did get second degree tears, which I mean, it's okay. I just took pain meds and then everything was fine. And again, this is where having help and asking for help if you need it is so important, you guys. Like we stayed in the hospital just one more day and then we came home. But the first, I'd say four or five days were the most painful. Not, again, nothing that I was like, oh my God, this hurts so bad. I think a C-section would probably be very different. Again, everyone's experience is gonna be different, but I had pain meds I was able to take. I had a lot of help around me. My mom was coming over, my sister-in-laws, my sister. My mother-in-law, there was a lot of help around me that I'm so, so, so thankful for. So that's definitely something, ask for help. Don't be shy to ask people for help. If people wanna cook for you, take it, like take all the help you can get that first week, two weeks, even three, honestly, postpartum. I think if it wasn't for everyone around me that was helping me after when I gave birth, the experience would have been so much different. There's just so much that can go on postpartum. So I'm so thankful that I had such a supportive help around me to help me kind of get through everything. We're at the three week mark now and you know, 
like I said, the first week was kind of sucky. It was like achy. I didn't feel that great. But then after that, I was making sure to get outside, go on walks. You guys, I'm not someone that can stay home. I was going on walks. I honestly, me and my husband went to Target like two times, I think after three or four days, I was like, I cannot be home anymore. And now I've been slowly starting to go out with her. I try to time it, you know, when she, after she eats and she changes her diaper and she's starting to take a nap, I'll put her in the car and we'll go out somewhere. It will literally be a short trip. I'll just go to Target or Home Goods or something quick. And then I'll literally come home until I get like really comfortable taking her out. I'll post vlogs and stuff on like TikTok and Instagram and some people will be like, oh my goodness, like how are you out? You know, two weeks, I could not do it. You guys, if I'm ever not feeling good, I don't go out. Just me, myself, I'm not someone that can stay home, you guys. Like I literally will do more damage staying home, like forcing myself to rest. I even went on walks those first two or three days. Like it was literally five minutes I'd go on a walk outside just so I could feel good and then I'd come back inside. But the whole idea was like, I just needed to get out. And that's my self-care. Some other people's self-care is, you know, laying in bed all day, watching TV, snuggling with their baby. And that's totally fine. Some days I do do that. But for me, I would literally do more damage just staying home. I can't. I try to go on walks every day, but the weather where I live is so hot. Like it's over 90 degrees and it's just too hot for both of us. So I can't wait. Fall is around the corner. So I'm super excited because I'm going to definitely start going on walks probably like all day long. Yesterday I went to Target and then after I wanted to go to Home Goods. I was like, okay, cool. She's sleeping on my way to Home Goods. She wakes up. She starts crying and screaming because she's starving. So I literally turned the car around and I came home. Like that was the end of my day. I was like, you know what? Home Goods will have to be for another day. Okay, I just laid her down. I'm trying to get her used to like loud noises when she's sleeping. Just so, you know, obviously make my life easier. So I will literally get a vacuum and come vacuum around her. I always have the TV on. I talk loud. Like I try to make sure she definitely gets used to sounds. So far, it's been going good. I know newborns literally change every single week. One week they like this, the next week they don't. So I am planning to cook today Sania Judge. So I have chicken like thawing right now. Sania Judge is like chicken that's seasoned. You put in a pan with potatoes and some veggies. So we are gonna do that for dinner. I've cooked two times since giving birth. Honestly, the rest of that, we either go eat at my in-laws, my mom's house, or we get takeout. One time I cooked like this pasta, the other time we did steak tacos, and then today we are doing this. So hopefully she lets me cook. I have not eaten anything yet today. This happens a lot. I just forget to eat because I'm so busy with her. But yeah, I've not eaten, so I don't really know what to eat. What I was doing for a couple days is I was getting those prepackaged salads from Target, okay? Those, so convenient, so easy, healthy. That was super important. That's why I even got them. I was like, oh, what a healthy, like quick lunch to have. And then I found a bug in it and I was like, okay, threw that away and I won't be getting those anymore. So I'm not gonna recommend those. Um, Honestly, I might make like chicken nuggets. I don't really know. So we ended up going with a grilled cheese and mangoes. Very random, but I don't know. That's what I came up with. Here is lunch. We have a grilled cheese and some mangoes. Okay, here is where we're at in dinner. Chicken is looking too good. Um, honestly, don't ask me for the recipe because I didn't really have a recipe. I just kind of followed the random stuff my mom told me to put in here. Um, I put like Maggi, oregano, cardamom, garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, ginger. What else did I put? This garlic herb seasoning, just a bunch of different seasonings. And I'm gonna mix it around, put it in the pan, and then I'm gonna season, I don't want it to spill, the potatoes. I just have them sitting in water right now. And then put some onion and carrots, and then it will go in the oven. Ow, what makes, oh, what makes onions make your eyes water? I don't know. Oh my God. That's enough, we're done. This is the potato and onion mixture and I'm about to pour it in here and then I'll cover it and wait a little bit. I'll probably put it in the fridge. Ow! And then cook it later around four. I'm so glad I was able to complete this while she's sleeping. Hey, now I'm about to cover it. This is the final looking result. Usually people add more veggies. Like usually when I make it, I'll add broccoli and zucchini and tomato and carrots and stuff but we just didn't do that today. So we have chicken and onion and potatoes. And then I added some butter slices just for some extra flavor. So I'm gonna cover it and then keep it in the fridge until it's time to eat. I'm so glad dinner is ready and out of the way. Just did the dishes too. Let me just say while I'm here, I have been loving this little, I need to do like things I've been loving so far in my pregnancy. <laughs> since giving birth, I mean. I've been loving this little bottle rack. One, I tried to make it aesthetic and I found a black and white one. Um, it's Dr. Brown's is the brand. And yeah, I've just been loving it, keeping it separate from like the rest of the dishes. Um, 
So yeah, I've been loving that. Got the dishes done. Wow, I love when she stays asleep and I get to like finish what I'm doing because a lot of the time she wakes up like midway of me doing something. It was just okay. Like I'll wear her. I'll put the carrier on and I'll wear her or I'll give her to my husband if he's not in a meeting or like too busy. Um, she hates the swing, so I don't really put her in there. I figure, I mean, she's only three weeks. Like a lot of people say, you know, one month, two months, like they'll like different things and she might end up liking the swing later on. But um, I am feeling productive, which is not always the case. I am not always productive. So don't let this video make you think I have my life together because I do not. My fear with chicken is that I never season it enough. Now that I've been married for two years and I've been like cooking a lot more, obviously I can kind of eye chicken and kind of tell how much like salt it needs or how much magi or whatever seasoning I'm using. But there are my times where I will under season it or over season it and it's just so annoying. And it's not like I can like, you know, like taste it because it's raw. What I could do, I know I could like make the seasoning mixture and then like taste that and then pour it on the chicken and mix it around. But um, anyways, yeah, so hopefully it's good. It smells good and it looks seasoned, so hopefully it's good. <sighs> okay, so right now it's 1.45. I'm gonna cover this, put it in the fridge. After, I'm just gonna sit. I'm gonna sit and enjoy the moment while she's asleep. At four o'clock, I actually have two of my friends coming over. They're coming to just see me and the baby since I had her. So yesterday when I went to Target, I bought, ugh, I love Target, you guys. I bought these just sliced cakes and I put them in a cute little tray on the table. I already have that ready. And then I bought some fruit that I'm also going to serve. So when they get here, I have all that stuff ready. Here we are now at week three. I'm honestly feeling really great, like emotionally, mentally, um, physically. And I'm so, so, so thankful for that. I genuinely think it was just from all the help I had around me. Like I had such a good support system. My husband was super, super helpful. It's so important to, uh, you know what? Having a kid made me realize how important your partner is. Pick a good partner, you guys. Pick someone that is going to help you. Pick someone that will be there. And pick someone that's not going to be a babysitter and be a father. You know what I mean? I understand he has work and I try to leave him as much as I can in the day because in the evening when he's off work, he's so helpful. In the mornings before he goes to work, like there's days if she wakes up early enough, he'll sit with her and take care of her while I sleep a little more or take a shower or do whatever I need to do. Just pick a good partner that is helpful. I'm going to be totally real right now, totally honest. I was very nervous um, of how I would look physically after having a baby you know and i kept telling myself i know i just gave birth like take it easy you know and i've been taking it easy i have not been hard on myself at all but i remember and you guys if you've been watching me for a while you know during my pregnancy i was keeping up a lot with pilates and walking from the beginning i was doing that because obviously you don't want to just randomly start working out in like your six month of pregnancy it's going to be super hard on you so from the beginning and I did that and I think it made such a difference in my recovery. Like a lot of the weight came off pretty quickly and my stomach kind of went down and I, now don't get me wrong, I'm still dealing with a lot of stretch marks and like just loose skin. You know, your stomach is loose after having a baby. All your organs were just stretched out and it's totally normal, it's totally fine. But I'm just saying something that I think made such a difference in helping me kind of feel back to normal and feel like myself again was the fact that I kept up with my exercise a lot during pregnancy. I made sure to walk. 10,000 steps every day. I went on like three walks, literally three walks every day. And I was, what's it called? Um, oh, and I was doing Pilates. I stopped Pilates though in my eighth month of pregnancy. So I did it all up until my eighth month. And then those last two months, I was walking 10,000 steps every day. And I truly think those made such a difference in helping me like kind of get back to normal. And I'm quoting normal because I'm not fully back to normal yet. You know what? I'll never be what I was before I had my baby, but I'm, I'm loving this new normal. I have a feeling she's gonna wake up sort of soon. So I'm gonna have a bottle ready because when that girl wakes up, you guys, there is like zero patience. So, so I showed you guys, this was like my bottle station. I use these bottles so much. I just honestly keep them right here. I don't even bother putting them away. I showed you guys when I was pregnant in the pantry, I have like a spinny thing and that's where the bottles were. But I mean, I use these more. Ooh, let's zoom out. I use these bottles multiple times a day. So I just leave them here. Like I'm not gonna keep walking in the pantry for them. Um, here's my little setup. And then I have my boiled water that I keep in this little thing right here. I use Kendamil. Love Kendamil, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I just have my water that I boil and leave here and then I let it cool down. She drinks room temperature bottles. 
Um, that's kind of just what I got her used to. I didn't want to have to worry about warming bottles and doing all that stuff. So I'm very glad I got her used to room temperature bottles. I need a little midday just pick me up. So speaking of what I was telling you guys earlier, how I'm dealing with stretch marks, I got, I see this all over my TikTok. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's like this B flat cream you put on. I have been trying it so far. I don't really notice a difference in my stretch marks on my stomach using it, but it's like all over my TikTok. People hype this up. So I'm going to keep using it and let you guys know if it works because I was like, hmm, is this just an ad? Like, does it actually work, you know, when you're worried if someone's like just trying to promote something? So I've been using that and I'm gonna let you guys know uh, the real tea on how that works. And then another thing I bought, I finally got my hands. I've been trying to get this for a while. The Mint Summer Fridays. I'm pretty sure I've told you guys before, I love like mint scented things. I have a problem when I first buy things, like I love to keep them in the container. I don't know why I do that. I'm not, I'm not ready to let go of this container yet though, so gonna go right back in here and just stay there midday treat is always necessary yummy is she waking up of course she oh she always wakes up like when i'm eating or like she'll start crying when i sit and eat she's gonna have to wait a little bit. sunshine woke up <laughs> three So we had dinner. I honestly forgot to show it. It's like 7.30 p.m. right now. Oh, look how beautiful these roses are that my friends brought me. I need to figure out where I want to put it. Maybe the living room table. They are so pretty. My husband is feeding Celine right now. I'm honestly debating if I should go on a walk, if I should go to Home Goods, or if I should take like a nice shower. I, I don't know. We are going on a much needed self-care walk right now. I'm just taking it on my own. Ideally, I would have loved to bring Celine and go on this walk because I do like her to come outside like every single day and just, you know, get fresh air. I took the opportunity of just having a moment alone. So I'm going on a walk. And one small mint chocolate chip shake. Brahms is our go-to for chocolate ice cream. Chip. Anyways, we hopped in a car went and got some ice cream and she fell asleep on the way so that's a win hopefully she stays asleep hello you guys i obviously did not get to film an outro last night because i was just dealing with trying to get celine to go to bed we went and got ice cream literally she woke up the second we entered the house and then um we ended up giving her a bath and kind of getting her down eventually i honestly i felt like i completely forgot how to vlog like i was out of it for so long but we're slowly getting back in i hope you guys enjoyed this day in my life i'm so sorry if i was rambling and like completely all over the place. I just felt like there was so much to say and I just didn't necessarily know how I wanted to say everything. But do not forget to check out the link below to shop Ana Luisa and get up to 30% off your jewelry. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in the next video.